What is the purpose of suffering and how can we overcome it? <laughs> well, well, suffering is is the 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 construct of the ego. And suffering ends when the ego relaxes and relinquishes its need to to control. And you see the ego is wants one thing. It wants it wants to live. And it does not want your soul, your soul, your godlike part to take the helm and 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 be in charge. And so the ego is what causes all suffering. And without it, when it, it when it is quelled, when it is quieted, suffering ends. And so the task is always in the letting go. And letting go is 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 hard to 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 describe. And so we will say, think about allowing it to relax, relax. And and we will share this vessel shares an illustration much like this. Your soul is a powerful, loving parent to all of the parts of who you are, to your fourth dimensional parts, the part of you that is son, that is that is brother, that is friend, that is lover, that is parent, and so on. And so the fearful, those parts have fearful aspects of the ego and allow your soul to begin to reparent all those parts and bring them into a place of safety and peace so they will relax and let go of their grip on your being well how do you overcome the ego and the monkey mind and the negative thoughts that that it creates in your life well, we would say that trying to stop thinking is a pointless <laughs> endeavor. So don't bother. But all things can be be done in meditation. And even if your mind is running all amok, all over, all over, all over in meditation, don't give up heart because even in the holding your body still, you are making progress and moving forward even in just breathing and 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 holding in stillness freedom will come your your mind wants to be yeah yeah okay good i want to come out for a second and share an <laughs> illustration that judah gave once okay so judah once said that um that our minds uh, imagine that you're the king of your life, Alex, mm -hmm. and you live in this beautiful king's uh, chamber and in your castle, and there's peace and love and joy in your kingdom. And there's you have this servant, and we're going to call the servant mind. And you decide to go away on a trip or whatever, and the servant gets a little cocky. And he decides he's going to take up residence in your chamber and he's going to lay down and roll around in your bed and eat your food. And, and then he gets even a little more bold and he starts telling the other servants what to do. And pretty soon he's convinced himself that he is the king. And so Judah explained to me that this is how the mind is. The mind, because of our, our culture and how we're raised, we are entrained out of living from our heart. We are entrained out of the heart being king. And from the time we're probably six, seven on, the mind starts to be this wicked servant that's kind of taken over. So a lot of it is, is stepping up and acting from our heart without thinking, going straight from our heart to action, straight from our heart to action and just acting from the heart. Sometimes it helps me just to even put my, fingers on my heart just to connect that way but the mind really has to be dethroned and the and as we enter that process the mind really doesn't go down easy
Mm-mm. you know, <laughs> and it can be incredibly noisy. But a lot of times I just, um, Chuck taught me this. I just laugh. I go, oh, there goes my mind. Oh, there's my monkey mind again. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I try to laugh about it and and just observe all the insanity and know that that's not really me. That's not my heart. Okay. Great answer. To watch the full video, click on the link below. And don't forget to subscribe. Subscribe.